Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. On this beautiful Sunday morning. Wow, I can't wait for this day. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's been quite an interesting weekend for me and uh, really fantastic. But today, first off, we're going to be talking about how to distinguish yourself from the rest of the crowd, if you will, uh, to set yourself apart and that people will know uh, you for who you are, what you do and all that good stuff. So uh, yeah, I'm really excited about this and I'll tell you the story of uh, how I got to this uh, topic and why I thought this would be great to sort of have a have a chat around it. And um, yeah, so welcome, welcome. Very really nice to have you here. Thank you for deciding to join uh, to join me this uh, on this morning. I really appreciate it. Alrighty, so back to normal. Sure. After like yesterday was stressful, guys. So apart from what happened during the session and all of that, where um, I did a lot of stuff, I heard when I listened to the to the recording afterwards, I heard that it wasn't even using my microphone. I think it was using my webcam's microphone. Yeah, it was just one of those days. But you know what? We got through it, and I think it was still a valuable uh, session. If I can uh, sort of look at what people were saying to me and sending me WhatsApps and things afterwards, <laughs> thank you very much for all of that. Um, yeah, sometimes we just have to go with what it is and, and what's happening. But yeah, I was very, very excited uh, for yesterday. Uh, and I'll redo that for the second part of that somewhere during the week. Uh, this upcoming week is quite busy with interviews and that. So we'll see how it goes and whether I get to do that. But I definitely will do it somewhere in the future then if I don't uh, do that. And yeah, so let me say good morning to everybody. Uh, let's get started with this whole day and uh yeah good morning terence welcome first in the house at 726 welcome you were here Quibus Klein on his heels good morning Quibus. uh what is that now 45 out of 45 and uh there's quite a number of people who said to me you know what i've watched all the episodes i wasn't there live but i did watch all the episodes to all of you thank you very much i deeply deeply appreciate it i mean that is 45 hours now of your life that you have decided to spend with whatever it is that that we were doing here so thank you very much for that. Uh, I deeply appreciate it. Uh, then Raymond, good morning, Raymond. Welcome back. Nice to have you here with us. Uh, Malcolm, my friend as well. Welcome, Malcolm. It feels like, hey, welcome, Malcolm. Hey, I didn't like, I don't. I know people don't like when you rhyme with their names and stuff, but that sounded quite cool. All righty, so Razan, good morning. Good morning, good morning, my friend. Slanganani, welcome you on YouTube, my friend. Good morning. I hope it's uh, a, a great day for you. And uh, I see that you said that this is a great topic. Thank you very much. Elmin Lotering, uh, welcome, Elmin. Thank you very much for being here once more. Uh, you are definitely way past the regular now. I hope to meet one day, uh, you know, when things go back to normal or even if we do like a, a Zoom thing with all of you. It'll be great to have a, a short discussion. And there's some things that I'm planning in that vein where that may become possible. Good morning, Louis. Lekker, lekker. Hier van die kaap af. Morgen, Louis. Um, I hope you're having... Uh, it's a beautiful morning in Cape Town once again. Thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate it. Uh, Louis sent me a picture. Um, and maybe I can show that quickly. It's luckily not nothing weird. It's just when I sent out the, the thing, he said, well, I said, well, please let me or, you know, bring coffee, pen, and a notepad. And uh, so I get this... Uh, <laughs> This message, I'm not sure if it'll focus, but there it is. Uh, it's an it's a iPad or a tablet or something. It looks like an iPad. And uh, thank you very much for that, Louis. I really appreciate all these kind of interactive messages that people are sending me and all of that. I I, I really appreciate it. Uh, uh, and it's awesome. Bongi, you are also a regular Bongi. Thank you very much for being here. I appreciate it. Mark Dimitri Hardis, an old friend. Mark, welcome back. Jack Beckett, welcome back. That's okay. Um, I can jock them all to off and he free starts of our off. So, yeah, we're both from the free state. Gary Walker, good morning, Gary. Welcome back once more. Nice to have you here this morning. And uh, like I say, planning something special for Friday. Yes, I am. Um, <clears throat> so, yes, absolutely. Because Friday is 50 episodes uh, on the dot. So, I am definitely there. Was uh, I changed the topic for today twice. Okay. Um, but I'll tell you the story now. So let me just uh, hop on over to, to my friends on LinkedIn. Mark from Oz. Mark, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, Stefan Mattia. Uh, morning. Neil Phillips. Good morning. Neil, are you not riding a bicycle today? But that's great. I'm not complaining. Franz Hutting. And uh, yeah, so let's see. Shlanka Nani is, is on both. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, let, let's get into this. Uh, so let me first tell you sort of, this is that's my brain and just like, 
You know, sometimes I think I've got a good idea and then I realize that maybe that idea will be better suited for some other day. And then I come up with a, another topic, which I post and I share. And then this morning at seven o'clock in the shower, I decided like, I don't know, it popped into my head, this whole thing about how do we, how can we distinguish ourselves? So I changed everything at seven this morning. <laughs> so everything I'm going to share with you has been put together. I still had to create the live stream, the images. I had to come up with the framework for today's discussion. So everything I'm going to share with you happened in the last hour. So let's see how it goes. I'm quite excited, but that's how I roll. It's like when I get an idea, I feel like, wow, no, this, it feels, I don't know. And it's weird to explain. Sometimes it just feels like this is something that I need to talk about. And this is something that I need to get out there. And then I go do it. So, yeah. So first off, uh, I was going to do something, but I'm going to leave that now for the 50th. So that's one of the things that will be happening on Friday. And um, <clears throat> then, uh, yeah, so, so that's happening on Friday. Then uh, the other thing that I wanted to do, I will do later on. That was the one where I wanted to talk about how much. Uh, and uh, it's, it's really a very open topic. But that was going to be a bit more technical. So it was a bit more about uh, tax and, you know, making decisions and what happens when people withdraw money from their retirement funds and they decide to pay off debt and they want to make up that money. And so it was a bit more technical um, kind of stuff. And uh, I mean, that, that's why I maybe felt that I didn't want to do it today, especially not on a Sunday. I wanted to have more of a discussion and I just like, I don't know how this popped into my head this morning. Let's talk about how do we distinguish ourselves. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm very excited for this. Good morning, Yaku Ritz. Welcome, Yaku. Um, Hiku van Sal, back once more. Good morning, Hiku. Thank you for joining us. And then Casper. Welcome, Casper, once again. Uh, really nice to, to have you all with us this morning. Uh, let me quickly see. Surieta, good morning. Jodine, my friend, good morning. Nice to have you here. Yeah, wow, that's very special to me. Thank you, Jodine. Uh, Arnel de Brain, Peter, so good morning, Arnel. Thank you very much for, for joining us over on LinkedIn. It is awesome. All right. So by now, hopefully, uh, you know, I see there's some new people in the house. So please interact with us, uh, you know, but you can do that through uh, sharing your ideas, your thoughts, your opinions, and by chatting to other people in the chat or in the comments. You're welcome to do that, you know. Uh, engage with people. This is a community. Uh, here we, we're there for one another and we help one another and we share ideas and we ask questions and all of that. So uh, some of the questions I will answer here. Uh, other, otherwise, other people so sometimes jump in and give answers in the chat, you know, as we go through, uh, which is what the community is all about. And then uh, if you can, please give us some love, you know, share, like, comment, especially on YouTube, but also on LinkedIn. If you can, please do that, um, you know, like it, react to it, clap hands, heart it, find it insightful, find it curious you know, or whatever. Uh, but if you can do that and then just hit the like button if you are getting any value from this, uh, particularly today. And then also please remember to subscribe to the channel. So I haven't been asking for this for the last two uh, sessions. And it's funny to see how the subscribes then go down. Not that people unsubscribe, it's just that nobody's subscribing. So we stay fairly level. So it's funny, if you don't ask, you don't get. Uh, that's also one of the premises that my life is built on. You don't ask, you don't get. And uh, yeah, so so please, if you can subscribe, if you're over on LinkedIn, you're more than welcome to to connect with me. Uh, if you do anything related to financial services uh, or in technology, uh, I'll be very happy to to connect. All right, Mbui, good morning, Mbui. Uh, welcome, nice to have you here. Thank you very much for joining us. And uh, yeah, let's get let's get into some of this stuff that I want to share. Um, maybe also what I would just want to talk about before I move on is that uh, what's going to happen to the show? Okay, so I haven't made my final, final, well, I haven't, done, what I do know is that the show will continue. So that's definitely there. Um, <clears throat> I haven't finalized all my plans and the, and the structures and everything for this. So I hope to have this by Friday. So by Friday, I'll definitely make the final announcement about what's going to happen to the show. Uh, but what I can tell you is that the show will move to a weekly shot, a uh, slot. So I'm only going to do it weekly. I won't be doing it every single day. Uh, and also, uh, one thing that may happen is that the show will be a bit shorter. So it may be half an hour to 45 minutes instead of an hour, except when we have interviews. So when I'm interviewing people, it may be longer. And uh, at the moment, what I'm struggling with, I don't know when to do it. So do we do it? You know, um, at the moment, my feeling is on a Tuesday morning. It's still from 8 until 9. And I understand that 
as people get back to to the things that they do, it'll be hard for some people to attend the show live, but it is still being recorded and it will still be available afterwards. You know, or do we move this to the evening or do we move it even earlier to seven o'clock in the morning? I don't know. Um, I will maybe be sending out a well, not maybe I, I will be sending out a little poll just to, sort of to 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 get your input and just to know what it is that you would prefer and maybe how you think we should continue with the show because ultimately I'm doing this for you. So what you want is very important to me. And uh, what I'll also be doing is to structure the show into segments. So we will have a little, maybe a little tech segment and then maybe a little bit of a technical and then maybe something like I'm going to do today. Uh, I don't know, <clears throat> but we'll see. Or, or maybe we'll have week one, we do this, week two, week three, week four, and then we start again kind of thing. So I'm not 100% sure how we'll do it. But uh, yeah, we will be asking for your input. Uh, you know, uh, tomorrow I guess I will send out that that poll. So thank you, uh, and if you can give me your input and your thoughts, I'll really, really uh, appreciate that. Alrighty, then uh, there's quite been there's been quite a number of people who's been doing the uh, or who's purchased the uh, the webinar on how to deliver a great online customer experience. Uh, thank you very, very much for that. Uh, I deeply appreciate it. If you want to go check it out, you can go to learn.circulus.co.za and click on webinars. Um, uh, there's been uh, quite good feedback on this, which I'm very, very grateful for. Um, and also, if you have any suggestions on this about what we can add, because I want to make this like the best one-hour program to get you going in terms of how do you deliver this great online experience to set you on that road and get you over that first step so that you can say, oh, I've been doing it like this, but if I only add this and this and this, maybe it will can become fantastic. I'm already halfway there. Uh, but there's definitely something there. Uh, one of the people that, that completed the course said to me, you know what, there was again two or three things that I can take and go implement. So th that is what it's all about. It's really about being practical. It's about being straight on. As I said yesterday, I will be adding more stuff to this uh, that will give you some more guidance on what the hardware that you need, uh, the kind of things that you should should purchase maybe or consider purchasing if you really want to up the quality of these things. Uh, but a lot of the things that I'm talking about in this specific program is more about what you do and how you do it, not what you do it with necessarily. It's also tool agnostic. So it doesn't matter which tool you're using, whether you're using Zoom or Teams or Google Meet, <clears throat> doesn't matter what you are using. It'll it'll definitely work uh, for, for all of that. So you're welcome to, to, to go check that out. And then just lastly, sorry, before I get going, is uh, the business assurance course is still open. My website is up and running. The emails are now finally working. And that is why yesterday was such a stressful day for me as I, I, I battled to get my email sorted out. But eventually that was sorted. So everything is working perfectly fine now. You can go and book. Uh, there are still some spots left. Uh, remember your profile meet lines, 315 Rand. Ignite members, 300. And for the rest, 350 Please support me with this. It's going to be fantastic. Three hours packed with business assurance. My normal business assurance course gives you 14 CPD points, 14, one, four. So this one, I'm still waiting for the approval. It's been submitted. I'm waiting. I'm probably going to get it a day or so after, after the thing. I'm expecting, you know, at, at least the amount of time that you spend with me, that amount of CPD hours. But I can't really say that until I've got any approval. So it is subject to that, but based on this content comes from my course. So it's been approved before. So I don't have any concerns that there's going to be any issues around that. But it is also about more than just your CPD. This is about unpacking all of the stuff that we used to do, that, that we tend to do in three days in the business assurance course and pack it into three hours. So it's really going to focus only on the most important stuff. So please uh, uh, join me for that. You can just go to franchise.co.za forward slash online refresher go book and hopefully you'll see that the site is so much faster it's just amazing i just love the new the new hosting that i've got anyway so that was a lot of marketing today i'm very sorry for that and that on a sunday of all days um but yeah seeing that the last two days i couldn't do that i thought let me just remind you about everything that is going on all right i'm going to get into the show and uh really start talking to you about about uh how do we distinguish ourselves you know and uh, I want to start off with this question is, do I feel like this? Or you should be asking yourself, do I feel like this? So the first thing is usually that, you know, I am the same as everyone else. There's only one way of doing things. You know, everybody does it in the same way. 
Uh, everybody's process is the same. So when I phone someone and someone else's phone, you know, it's, it's very hard for people to distinguish between who they will go with. And they will probably go with the person that they like more, the person that was more engaging over the phone or something like that. But it doesn't mean that there's any difference really between the two of you. So that is very, very important that, you know, if you feel like that, then this is definitely some something that you want to finish listening to right now. Also, this is something that I felt for a very, very long time and uh, and still sometimes do, well, often actually, uh, but that you are not on the same level as others. And by this, I don't mean that you're there and they are here. It's not what I mean. It's just that they are there and you are here. So you're not at the same level. You are below the level where everybody else is at. But you compare yourself to certain people and – you look at where they are in their journey, you look at where you are, that's not necessarily at the same point in time. So it's unfair to watch yourself, to compare yourself to anybody else and say, oh, I'm not on their level. It's not to say that you shouldn't recognize that you're not yet on the level where you would like to be, but you don't want to be on their level. You want to be on your level, but the level where you want to be. So that is a very, uh, you know, hard and important question to ask. You know, then... I think also the other thing that I see a lot of the time is that we feel that we can only work with certain types of clients or a certain level of client. So, you know, I would just work with salaried individuals. Uh, it should just be family, kids, nothing funny. As soon as there's a trust, as soon as there's a business, as soon as there is anything like that, then I want to retract. I'll just, uh, that's not for me. I get very uncomfortable. And I also don't use that as an opportunity to actually get to know how to work with those people. And, um, you know, I think often because, uh, and the reason why people don't then take that on as a challenge or as a growth opportunity is that maybe you feel like you've got imposter syndrome. You know, it's like, I don't know how to do this. And even, you know, there's so many people that know how to do the job, but they still feel like, mm, I feel like an imposter. I don't really know. And I think the reason for that is that you've got nothing to compare yourself to. Uh, or that you don't know how others are doing it, and, and, and possibly you're doing it a lot better than than most other people. Uh, but but we will never know. And then also that you know, do you ever feel like I have nothing unique to say? I have nothing unique to say. Or everything I say, everybody else is saying already. So let me just keep quiet and not say anything. That's how I felt for a very long time, you know. And sometimes still, when you and this is where this show was so fantastic for me because I just got to talk about things that I have certain views and opinions about and certain feelings towards. And, you know, I just had to do it because I made a commitment. But I'll get to that at, at, the, at the end. But it's, you know, usually it just feels like mm, it's just like more of the same, you know. And who's going to listen to me? If there's all these very well-known people saying things in on social media or in the papers or, you know, or you think that you need to be special to get published in something like the FA News or the or the uh, money marketing or on money web or somewhere, you know, not necessarily, okay? The only difference is that people that do get to be published there just either reached out and they had the guts to go and face that and, and get themselves published, or they happened to have done something where somebody took note and then came and asked them. But a lot of times you can also get out there by just taking that first step. Okay, but I'm running some of my, my ideas uh, ahead now. And then also this question about why would others listen to me? Why would they even listen to me? Why would anybody listen to Francois? If you've got, in my space, if you've got very well-known people that's been here for years, you know, why is anybody going to pitch up and listen to what I've got to say? And you can see that all of these things are sort of questions that we ask ourselves and that we limit our beliefs on. I think that is really what's happening here is that I don't believe enough in myself and my ability and that I'm unique and therefore I feel inferior to other people. Or I feel that I'm just the same as other people. Let's say you don't feel inferior, but you do feel the same as others. So then why even say if, if Francho said it first, why should I say it as well? You know, one of the things that, that we're busy uh, planning uh, that is, a, is, a, is a session around scams. And I, I mean, there's been a lot of information sent to me by Quibus and, and, and others. And it's something that I've been looking into and been looking at. And I saw that there was somebody who posted an article on the weekend about that. 
Um, you know, so now it feels like, oh, so, so should I still go ahead and do this? And I'm absolutely going to. I'm not going to. Usually in the past, I wouldn't have. I would have said, oh, now I've missed my chance. It's not about missing chances. Different people listen to different people. So there's nothing wrong with you also coming out with your own ideas and your own things, which is you're going to position it in a way that nobody else is doing it. Even if it's the most well-known, most respected, you know, expert in whatever it is that they're talking about, you're going to position and say things differently to what they are. And there are some people who are going to resonate with what you've got to say and, uh, and not with them. Uh, I've had that in the past where people will come up to me after the session and say, you know what, I've done this so many times. I couldn't get it. Now I get it. Thank you very much. You know, and it doesn't happen with everybody. It's not like everybody that comes to my sessions comes and tell me things like that. But, it, you know, it takes one or two or three people to come and say that to you, to know that, well, you know, there's something there that, that, that we are doing that's, that's definitely worth uh, the while. So once you uh, sort of are at that point and you can recognize how you are feeling, I guess the, the very important question would then be, where do I start even? Because this is like anything else, you know, when you started in this business, where did you start? You know, you got to, you, you, you had to get training. People had to help you. Uh, you know, you either had to join a, an existing company. I don't think there's many people that would just, who know nothing, who would start a financial services provider. Most people would start with one of the companies probably, or they would get an opportunity in an existing independent practice, for example, and they would join there, and that's how they get to learn. And then later on, they either stay with that firm, or they would move on to another firm, or they would start their own firm. So so those are some of the things that that uh, would, 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 would happen. But... I think the first step is that you've got to decide that, listen, I'm going to change what I believe about myself because that is what that first question was all about, is for you to determine what do you, what do you, what do you actually believe? What are your thought patterns? What are the things that's really holding you back? And it's the answers to these questions that's going to determine, you know, if there's anything that holds you back, if there's anything at all even, okay? So that is where you start. you got to decide, listen, based on my answers, am I going to change what I believe and am I going to change my mindset? And we've spoken about this in numerous episodes before, how important your mindset is, how powerful your mindset is, and the, the sort of steps that you can take to start changing that mind step and, uh, mind, uh, um, mindset sorry, and, uh, and, and, and so forth. So, so there's enough information there to help you to start to, to do that, but you've got to decide that, listen, I need to change my mindset. I need to change my beliefs around this. Okay, so that is step one. And once you've made that decision, then you've got to commit to it. If you're not going to really like awesomely commit to this, and I mean, we've spoken about so many things over the last 45 episodes that if you had to implement one thing from each one of those, I mean, you'll be sitting with 45 things to implement. So if you haven't realized, it's, it's really now time to sort of prioritize and say which three things is going to have the biggest impact on my life, my business, and which three things should I first be focusing on to get implemented. But you can now have a whole list to keep you busy for the next two, three, four years possibly of things that you can implement. And that's one of the things that I'll get to um, you know, as well when, when you s sort of start this journey to, to start setting yourself apart uh, you know, uh, properly. And then you need, a, you need a strategy. If you don't have a plan, obviously it's going to be very hard to get to where you want to go and to really measure whether you are making progress or not. So you need that strategy. And that is sort of what I want to give you, you know, some ideas around that in, in the rest of the session to help you with like, what are the things that I need to consider as part of my plan? And what am I going to do? And how am I going to do it? Which things will work for me? Okay, don't worry about what other people are doing. Just worry about what you're doing. And that is sort of the first step. It's just get away from what everybody else is doing. Just worry about what you do. Don't worry. Don't compare yourself to anybody um, because you'll get anxious if you see what other people are busy with. Okay? Because, again, they they maybe you here. Sometimes you read what other people are doing and you'll say, wow, I'm here. They're still there. They still need to catch up. What a wonderful place to be. Okay? But most people will find themselves like, oh, they, they, oh I'll, I've, I've, I'm becoming irrelevant. And once you go that, down that road, you know, you're really in for 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 our time. All righty, so let's see. Good morning. Good morning, Francis. Um, <laughs> so Neil says he, 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 he was thinking of watching the show while cycling, but he then came to his senses because one does fall hard on a bicycle. 
So you don't want to do that. Okay, so where do we start? I want to start off with quick wins first. Uh, this is important uh, because when you get quick wins, you know, that's that's nice motivation to keep going. And it's, it, you also inspire yourself. And when you have inspiration mixed with some motivation, you know, it becomes a very powerful thing. So I want to share with you some some story here about quick wins and how powerful they are. And you may have all have heard sort of about quick wins, you know, always give you give someone a quick win so that they can, you know, so, so that they can implement something and get a result quickly. And then, you know, that's how you hook them and that's how you bring them in. But this for me is about you to have a quick win in terms of how you set yourself apart. So quick wins are things that you can have immediate impact or immediate results on. Now, I, I recently, you know, at the ripe old age of 45, well, I'm turning 45 this year, I, st I uh, started uh, during the lockdown, uh, me and my friend, well, a friend and I, what we did was we started, uh, you know, playing games against one another, well, not games, but a particular racing game against one another. And it's quite fun because you talk to one another while you're doing it and having a chat and then just, you know, different courses and things like that. But that game, before you could get to the position where you could actually play against one another as friends, you uh, you had to do a whole host of things. Okay, there's a whole host of like other races you had to do and things you had to win and the amount of money you needed and all sorts of things like that. But they are very, very clever. So in your first, I mean, I knew nothing about this game. In your first few races, it's almost like they let you win. And that's like, wow, this is awesome. I'm winning. I'm like, you know, and you get stuck into this and you start to learn the game and they do different things to show you what you can do. And then you get into this game and it's like, wow. And now like almost every single day for about half an hour, we would just, you know, let's, let's ride, let's do it. And then, uh, you know, have some fun for half an hour and then you're out of there. But those are the kind of things that all sort of games are, are implementing. And even think about when you go gambling. Okay, if, if you are somebody that gambles and you like to play machines, etc., often when you start playing, you'll win a couple and then you'll lose. And as you lose, you, you win suddenly a little bit. They keep you in the game because there's these small little wins and maybe the big win will come. So you can use it for good or for evil, I think. Uh, but um, but but in, in our case, hopefully we, we're just going to use this for the better and for, for positive outcomes. But look at what you can do to have these uh, quick wins. And if you follow this whole gaming theory about, you know, if you have wins early on, it sets you up to keep going. It sets you up to get more into what it is that you're doing and to believe more in what it is that you, that, 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 uh, you are doing. So what are some of the things that, uh, that we can do? Well, something that I know I could do that I sort of uh, am a little bit rebellious about, but it is something that one could definitely do and that makes an immediate impact. And that is if you think about your grooming and your dress code. Okay, that is something that can set you apart. And Kobus, I hope you don't mind me using you as an example because I know you well. I mean, if you look at the way that Quibus dresses, uh, you know, he's always, doesn't matter. You saw in his episode whether he's working from home, you've seen it on LinkedIn. I mean, I go to meetings with Quibus sometimes uh, at the FBI, et cetera, and the way you see him on social media is exactly the way that you'll see him in life. I visited him at his office quite a few times, and that's always what it looks like. I mean, you saw what they do in terms of their dress code in the office where they color code with the assistants and everybody. You know, so that is extremely, extremely powerful. For me personally, it's very hot because it's uncomfortable for me. I don't like being all wrapped up in that, okay? So, yes, maybe my first step is to lose a lot of weight so that it doesn't bother me that much. But that's a decision that I need to make. But I can tell you the impact of seeing someone like that and the immediate perception you have of somebody that dresses like that and that's groomed like that, Etc. So, Kobus, I really don't uh, hope you mind me using you as an example, but um, but it's really one of those uh, that, that is important, you know. And often we go down the road of just like, no, that's not that's like old school. Okay, so don't do suits and ties and things like that. But it's exactly why he is standing out. It is because nobody else is doing it anymore. Everybody has has gone to the Steve Jobs way with his uh, blue denim and his black shirt, t-shirt for that. Okay. And it's nice to work like that. I enjoy working like that. Okay, but is it then setting you apart or are you like everybody else? It's a hard question to ask. So when I asked this question this morning, you know, I started thinking about that myself and, and, and about how I should do things going forward. So as much as I'm sharing this with you, I'm actually talking to myself. And most of the things that I've written down here, I'm saying, am I, am I, am I? So it's not about just you. This is also about asking these questions to myself. Okay. 
Um, and then something that I never did and that I found out afterwards that really would have made a big difference in my life and how I saw myself and where I went with my life was to ask others what they love about you and what they think about you, you know, and, and ask people you trust, those people that will give you an honest answer, you know, ask some of your clients to say, listen, you know, why, you, why do you do business with me? Why me? Why not someone else? What is it about me that makes you stick with me? Um, don't be, it's not about being vain or, or being pat on the back or on the shoulder or, or anything like that. This is more about hearing and you must you really listen about what other people are saying about you. Because that's what happened when I started this training business in 2016. When uh, people came to hear about this, you know how many advisors said, but that's what you've always done. That's, you know, if I think about you, I think about knowledge. I think about training. I think about explaining things in a way that I can understand it. I, I swear to you, I never, 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 never saw myself like that. And I never even thought that anybody noticed that. I knew I loved it. I don't even think I realized it, but I knew that I loved it. And that is what happens when people give you real and honest feedback. Those are the things that you can focus more on to, to, to make you stand out. And this isn't about, you know, going boss and very egotistical and very, um, you know, just making it about yourself. Not at all. But you should leverage those the, those kind of things. And when I get to the for, when we look at for the long term, you know, you'll see there that I actually we need to focus on those uh, those things a lot. But where this is a quick win is the fact that when you hear about what people are thinking about you and what people feel about you and what they see about you, it is a very quick reminder that you are in fact doing something that is unique. There are people who choose to work only with you and not with someone else at this point in time. Even if you only have one client that wants to work with you, that's fantastic. That is the only client that you need. And then we go after more of them. Okay. Then um, I think something that we can do immediately, and, and this is one of those things where you can literally implement this tomorrow when you get back to work, is to give feedback and to communicate like a beast. Okay. Um, I think that is where a lot of businesses fall flat, and I'm certainly guilty of that, where I don't get back to people in time because it's just like, you know, my, my inbox is flooding with things, and I tend to, like, get to emails now when I get to them. But it's a good and a bad thing. It means I get other things done, but the bad, things is, bad thing is that it creates a perception of bad service. And, um, you know, there are things that we can implement and do to obviously get that better. But if you can give feedback, you know, if you promise the client to do something and you don't get to it, just give them feedback to say, listen, I know I promised you this, but now it's this. Or what happened often with me as a consultant is that we would promise an advisor something like commission run or that. And then tomorrow morning you get there and the commission run didn't take place. Okay. Even though you had confirmation the day before. And then it's like, pick up the phone and phone. Listen, this is what happened. It didn't. I pushed the button again. So sorry, it'll now be tomorrow. I'm very sorry, but this is it. But the fact that you give feedback, they, they start to trust you in that manner. So whether it's good feedback or it's feedback on not so not such good news or, or, or information, you still do it. So this is very, very powerful. And by managing expectations, and we've spoken about this quite a few times as well, when you manage expectations, it's, a, it's exactly what you do by giving feedback and by communicating. And if I say you need to do it like a beast, I don't mean it like just go boss. It needs to be effective and efficient as well. It needs to be focused and it doesn't have, shouldn't be overwhelming. It shouldn't be, now if you communicate like a beast, you send 100 messages a day. Okay, that's not what it is about. But what I'm saying is that you need to be relentless in the way that you approach feedback and communication to clients, not just now, but it, like always. Okay, so that is that is quite important. And then be responsive, you know. Uh, there's nothing that that goes as far as being responsive. But again, you know, you may set up systems and people around you to help you be more responsive. Uh, because if you need to be doing every single thing in your business, you're not going to get to everything and you're going to be responsive for a while or today you're responsive and for the next week you're not responsive. But by being responsive, meaning that when somebody does uh, contact you or connect with you, that you respond immediately or timelessly uh, at least, you know, and um, yeah, so so that's what, what I mean with, with being responsive. So as you can see, these are all things that you can do immediately and that's going to have an immediate impact on how people see you because nobody else are doing these things. People's feedback suck. The bigger the business, the worse their feedback is usually. That's what that's my experience, you know. So, so do that. They are not responsive. 
Okay. I mean, yesterday I was trying to sort out my stuff. Really, two two of the companies that I now work with has really been helpful on a Saturday. First of all, my email provider, because my email is being provided by someone else. It's not part of my hosting because it's a it is a, a Microsoft email. But it's um this woman helped me yesterday. We went through everything, we checked everything. She spent like 45 minutes with me on the phone. Let's go through all the settings, let's look at this, let's look at that. And then we, we got it back up and running. The same with the people that I use for my streaming service, because yesterday I couldn't get into the streaming service, as I explained, and that all got fixed. Okay, so they helped me change my email address, because I also even couldn't change my email address to get in, because I needed my email address to get in. <laughs> so I needed to contact them, and you know what? They helped me yesterday. So um, they changed everything for me after doing a lot of checks and making sure that I'm still who I am. So Nadine from, I don't know where you are, Nadine, but thank you very much for, for helping me sort that. And um, yeah, so so luckily that's why we're back to normal today. But those are, are things where I think, you know, you're being responsive, you give feedback, you, you do things like that. So that is very important. But then another thing you can do for yourself to have a quick win is that you need to forget about immediate results, actually. You know, so there are certain things that you can do that can have an immediate impact, but then you need to forget about the immediate impact things. Then you need to start say, well, I need to shift my focus to the long game because setting yourself apart is not a once-off event. It's not a once-off thing that you do. It is something that you need to keep on doing as you go through. Okay. And on that, I want to move on to setting myself apart uh, for the for the long game. And uh, let me just quickly see if there's any, any other comments. Um, Kweber says, spot on, establish the why, add the purpose, commit to the plan with passion and see it as a process and not a project. Yes, that's important. Yo, that, that's a huge distinction between a uh, project and a process because a process is ongoing. A project has an end date. Very, very powerful. Well, well said, Kweber. Work at it daily, disrupt yourself and become the disruptor. Yes, that is something that you have said quite a lot. You can either be disrupted or you can disrupt. Uh, so th definitely, and, and the thing is that we don't always know how to how to do that. All right, so what I'm going to, to talk about now is setting myself apart for the long haul. What are the things that you should do each and every single day so that you are always seen as well, you stand out? And you'll see that, that my hashtag that I use often in, in all my communication is rise above the rest. Because that's what we do. We help advisors rise above the rest. I want you to set yourself apart. And there are certain of these things. We don't focus on all these things, but you can. we can connect you to people that can help you with all of these things. But there are some of these things that we actually help you to set yourself apart in that sphere of everything that you need to be doing. So let's get into this because there's quite a number of them. The first one is that you need to be unabatedly helpful. Unwaveringly, you've got to be helpful. Um, and, the, and sort of the next point, we'll, we'll link on to this as well. But if it feels to anybody like they, they are interrupting you, that you that, that they are, you know, uh, we had this thing about like the 10 commandments about financial advisors uh, when I was a consultant back in the day. And uh, one of the things there is that when a, a, an advisor phones, you know, they are not an interruption of your day or of your business. They are the purpose of it. So you can turn that around to go back to, to you and your client. When a client phones, they're not an interruption of your day or your planning. They are the purpose of your business. They are the purpose of why you're doing what you are doing. So you've got to be always, always helpful. Okay, that goes a long way. I mean, just think about how you feel when somebody did something for you and they helped you. Okay, and sometimes we think it's something small and insignificant, but for that person maybe experiencing that, Sure, if they do this for me when it's such a small thing, what will they do for me when it's a big thing? And that if that doesn't set you apart, then I don't know what in the world will. And then what goes with that is that you need to care from the deepest part of your heart, or in my case, in the deepest part of my heart. So you can't go out there and say, oh, we care, we give you peace of mind, uh, you know, we make sure that you can retire. We do all these things, but actually we, we don't really care. All we care about is some other stuff. So you need to care deeply. And if, if it's hard for you to care, because often what we've done is we've built walls around ourselves and it's very hard for us to open up and be vulnerable. I spoke about this in another episode as well, how important it is for you to be vulnerable at times and how powerful it can be to be vulnerable, to be open to things, you know. 
So, yo, it came from the deepest part of, 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 of your heart, okay? It's something that you just do, and we all have that capability. We all have the ability to care from the deepest. doesn't matter what happened to you in the past. It is a decision you make because we all want to be cared for, and therefore we are, also, we are all caring people. We all want to help others. I mean, how many of you wish that you could do more to help other people during this time? Okay, we all do. It's a natural human thing. We want to help others. But sometimes, as I say, we build these walls around us that will just not let anybody in and also doesn't let us out. And that's a problem. We need to get out. We need to care. Okay, so that is definitely a, a very important thing that you need to do. So if you, if you look at these first two things, it's, it's really about, you know, just who, who and how you are as a human being. So you don't need any special skills. You don't need any special knowledge. You just need to be human. Okay, so if you do that, I promise you, you'll set yourself apart. And the funny thing is, if you, if you are the person to, to do this, your staff will follow suit. Your assistant will follow suit. Your family will start to follow suit. Because they will see in the way that you do things, it's inspirational. They will just want to follow and do things exactly the same way as what you are doing it. Now we get more into some of the more, more like things that you need to do and that you can learn. Okay, so those things are just being human can really set you apart. It's funny. Okay, I think you can let me know if you agree with me or not. But the next one then is you need, I need to master my knowledge. There is just no excuse for you and I not to have the highest level of knowledge that we could possibly get. And I don't know why people go and they, they, they start in this business and then they get to that point and then they stop. Or 10 years ago, you did your CFP or your, you even did your advanced 10 years ago. And now you think that that's it. I know I've done everything I wanted to do. There's quite a number of people that we work with who's just they're studying every single year. They're learning more things they're doing. And I commend you for that. That is how it should be. But you need to refresh your, 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 your knowledge every single year. Too often have I had people in my courses saying like, no, Francho, it doesn't work like that. It works like that. And I go like, yes, it used to. But about five years ago, it changed. And this is when it changed. And this is how it changed. They were like, oh, crap, I didn't know that. So that is obviously amazing for me because I can help them realize. But the most important thing is if they didn't take the step to come and attend these things, they wouldn't have known. If they just had this thing about like, I know, I've done this, it's old like old news things change and they change rapidly and they change a lot so keeping up to date and even getting your knowledge up there and then keeping it there is extremely extremely important that's why i use the word master not just study or know okay master my knowledge and it, it that needs that could be like because everything in financial planning it could be in a specific subset of financial planning depending on what your business focuses on so you need to go in and establish what knowledge do I really, really need? What knowledge does my team need? That's important because there needs to be a plan of how are you going to do that and what do we need to do? And then you must be willing to invest into that because it is absolutely, absolutely an investment. It is a massive investment. Okay. So that is definitely another way of setting yourself apart. Then something that will go back and that will link on to being helpful and caring, uh, but also then what I spoke about when I was speaking about the, uh, the, 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 the quick wins was, you know, um, is you need to master your strengths. And this is something that I spoke in episode five about to uh, Johan Westhuizen. So if you ever want to get into your strengths or anything like that, you have to speak to Johan Westhuizen. Um, Johan Westhuizen is, is, has helped me quite a bit with this. And I've still got a long way to go with strengths, you know, but uh, he really, like, if he works with you, he keeps you to it. And uh, he really sort of makes you or holds you accountable. It doesn't make you. You still have to do it. Uh, there were often times where I said to him, Johan, I didn't do it. And then he said, okay, but then next week you need to do it. But he'll hold me accountable. He wouldn't let me go until I sort of did all the things that I set out to do. And by starting to learn about strengths and understanding about how you can, can do this, and I want to, want to give you a very simple example quickly. Often it, what you need to build a very successful business is discipline. You will often see people that are very successful in life will say, oh, I've got all the self-discipline and I've got all this. You know where discipline ranks for me out of 35? I think on 34. I have the least amount of, of discipline in the world, apparently. Okay. But how do I then get all these things done? Because when people look at me and they say, oh, wow, well, look what they've done. 
And well, they, you must have a lot of discipline. Well, if I had a lot of discipline, I wouldn't be this big as I am at the moment. So the thing is that I'm using other strengths to get me to do things that needs to be done, but I'm not using discipline because I'm not disciplined. So for me, I've got other strengths. Some of my top strengths are responsibility. So think about that. So even though I don't have the discipline, my responsibility can force me to do that. Okay. Sort of, I can use that strategy is one of my top five strengths. So I can have a plan and a strategy and use my responsibility to be able to do the things that I want to do. So once these things start clicking and you understand that you can use different strengths together to get to the place that you want to be and that you need to be, you know, that changes lives, people. It changes your life. And then once you change your life, you can definitely change other people's lives. And um, so that is why mastering my strengths is extremely important. It is something I would never have put on here before. But this is absolutely amazing. Um, it really opens up a lot of doors. There's quite a few people that I've gotten to work with now in the last few months or so that are also into strengths coaching and they do these kind of things. So there's there's a lot of people that, that believe in this. But the premise about this is that you focus on your strengths, not your weaknesses. You develop your strengths, not your weaknesses. And often you look at a personal development plan in a company, they want to focus on your weaknesses and what you're not good at. You're not good at it for a, for a reason. Okay, unless you know and understand that you actually have a talent for that, then you can develop it because then you're weak at it because you just haven't mastered it yet. But if it's something that you are naturally not talented for, or it's not doesn't rank high in your talents, then don't waste your time on that. Get someone else to take that over and you focus on the things that you are good at. So that's definitely something to, to check out. The next one is uh, master my people skills. You know, unfortunately, we need to be able to talk to people. And uh, there was a session we did the other day um, where we spoke about about relationships. So you, I can't remember which episode that was, but it was in the in this week. I spoke about relationships. So go check out that episode if you haven't already. Um, but yeah, you, you need to master your people skills. You need to be able to connect with people. You need to know how to communicate with people. You need to know, you know, what to focus on with people. You need to know how to lead them, how to influence them. Uh, in a good way, not a bad way, in a good way. We always use everything that we learn for good. We don't do it for bad or for evil, if you will. So, yeah, you need to you need to do that. But you need to master your people skills. And again, these are things that you need to work on. And let me just stop here for a second and just say that you shouldn't be working on all these things at the same time. Everything that I'm sharing with you, you need to go and figure out which one of these things are really going to have the biggest impact on me, you know, first. And then that's what you start with. But then you can have a plan. Say, once I've done this, then I want to do this. Then I want to do this. That's the plan. And that's what I'm getting to. These things will make sure that you set yourself apart for the long term, uh, which is what we want. Then you've got to master your business skills. Guys, if you can't run a business, if you can't manage your money, uh, you know, there's a few sessions that, that, we, that we do about this and where we sort of speak to younger advisors about how to manage your money and the sort of, you know, walk your own talk kind of things. But, you know, you need to master your business skills. It is something that I'm still working on that I don't have uh, mastered yet. I haven't, I'm not close to, I'm, I'm like, it feels like I'm, I'm in the first bit still of learning about business, you know. And particularly if you're a small business, because it feels like you and the business is the same person. You, you're the same. So you live from the business account, you know, um, you live from your personal account and everything is just one and the same thing. And even if you are working for a company where they pay you bi-weekly or weekly or monthly or, or whatever and you earn commission, you should still treat that as income for your business and you should decide what are you doing with that. So important. I mean, that's just some of the stuff. You know, we spoke about value propositions. We've spoken about marketing. We've spoken about sales. Uh, you know, on Tuesday, we'll be talking about financial management. So these are the kind of skills that we really need to master. If you really want to want to run a great business and be able to deliver value to your clients and do all the things that you're doing, then that is absolutely non-negotiable. All right. So let me just quickly um, summarize that again. So that was for the long haul. If you want to be in it for the long term, you want to set yourself apart for the long term. Okay. And you see, I haven't even spoken about you know, how you can use technology, the more tactical stuff. So I haven't spoken about that. This is more about like who you are, what you know, and and how well you can use that because that's what's going to set you apart, okay? Um, so be unabatedly helpful always, okay? Care from the deepest part of your heart always. Master your knowledge. 
master your strengths, master your people skills, and master your business skills. Those are the things that will really set you apart over the long term uh, if you are able to do that. And as I said when I started with this, it's like you have to be just be human. I swear that makes you stand out. Just be human. Just care. Listen. You know, listen is a form of caring. Uh, so that is that is important. Then my next point is how do we now make it past that first hurdle? Let me just first see. Bongi says humility and empathy is important in our business. It works for me. Absolutely, Bongi. Clients appreciate this and it makes close off easy. Great stuff. Well done, Bongi. Uh, but it's you, you are singing a song that I love. Uh, so that is definitely um so Clifton Strengths Finder with Johan is incredibly powerful. Yeah, that's right, Rizan. You said you also worked a little bit with Johan in terms of that. So that is exactly the Johan I'm referring to. And just by the way, there is no connection between Rizan Westhuizen and Johan Westhuizen. It's like Wein on the Toy and Franz on the Toy. We are not related. Uh, Rizan, her Westhuizen and his, his Westhuizen, I think, is spelled uh, differently. But um, yeah, so they, they're not related. Just, just let me just put that out there. Um, quickly see... Franz Hutting says, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Absolutely, absolutely. Wow, that's powerful. Um, Kubis, uh, Neil says to Kubis, amazing Kubis, I would love to know how you deal with email overload. I really battle with this. Maybe the topic for another session. Yes, um, because that is something that I'm also struggling with. And there's a few ideas that, that we've got around where I want to ask for your greatest, best tips in certain areas. But I'll talk about that tomorrow. Um, so, so we've got some ideas uh, uh, around this, uh, and I want to use that in a future episode. So this will maybe be one of those, definitely, that we that we can uh, have a look at. Alrighty, so then on to the, the next part, which is getting myself over that first hurdle. You know, how do I do that? Because probably where you're sitting there is that maybe you feel a little bit anxious. Maybe you feel like, you know what, oh, there's so much I need to do. So... You have that anxiety. You feel like there's so much to do. You feel overwhelmed. You feel like, oh, you know what? It's just like never. And just go back to what I said when I was talking about quick wins. Forget about, forget about it. Like move your focus away from having immediate results. Just know where you are working towards and then take it that one day at a time. Don't try and fix everything that you think should be fixed right now. Focus on the things that are that's going to have the biggest impact. You know, if you want some quick wins, look at some things that you can do that can help you win immediately. And it doesn't have to be the things on my list. Maybe there are other things that you can do. But then you start working on everything. And it's amazing. I still I, the one thing I learned from my live stream is that it's now been 45 days, 45 hours of content. It probably took me as many, as much time to prepare. But that doesn't matter. It's not about the preparation. At the end of the day, it's what did we create in 45 days? I created 45 hours of content. Okay? That is almost two full days, like from the start to the end, two full days of content. So if you started watching now, you will go right through for, for, for two days without sleeping. Okay? That's longer than Lord of the Rings, which is nine hours. Okay? And we managed to do that in a month and a half. Simply because we did a little bit every single day. So it's really just adding up, adding up, adding up, adding up, adding up. So if you must have that same thing where you just spend an hour a day working on that first thing that you want to change. And before you know it, within a month, two months, three months, I mean, it may sound like, oh, it's a long way off. Until you get there, you thought like, well, where did the, where did the three months go? That's what's going to be the, the response. And I'm experiencing that at the moment. So previously, I would have just said that. Now I can tell you like, wow, it's amazing. It, it's, it really is amazing when you do that. You've got to believe in your plan. If you've set out that plan, don't question the plan. Believe in the plan. As I said before, you need to commit to that plan. You need to stick to it. You need to believe in yourself, okay? So do that. And then just dive in. When I started this live show, I didn't know sort of what was going to happen. My, my biggest fear and my biggest anxiety that I had is that nobody's going to show up. Nobody's going to show up. Okay, now we're looking at, uh, I don't know, we've had like 80,000 minutes of views in the last month, just the last 28 days alone. You know, uh, there's 8,000, well, that's how, how many minutes was watched. We've got over 8,000 views. You know, it's, and that's just on YouTube. I'm, I don't even know about like LinkedIn I've got. We, we usually tend to get between 450 and 800 views per video, depending on on, on the topic. 
And I don't know how many of those that actually watch the video because I don't have that kind of stats. But on YouTube, I can see that people are consuming between 30 and 50% of the video. For an hour-long video, of which most of the views takes place after the live show, that's amazing, you know? That's really, really amazing. And in future, we will I will go try and go back and we will edit some of those things to, to show where the specific topics start in the video and, and all of that kind of stuff. But for now, it's just diving in, you know, learning. Uh, I was thinking, should I talk about handling a crisis today? Because that's what happened yesterday. Yesterday was one hell of a crisis for me. But I think I got through it unscathed, you know, because I just like sort of stepped back and was a bit relaxed, luckily, in the process. But but maybe that's something we can talk about as well. You need to realize that fear is going to do everything in its power to stop you. It's going to do everything in its power to, to, to sort of keep you where you are because that's just how our brain is wired. And this is something that Ryan Stramrud said in his episode. That episode was phenomenal. I've watched it a few times. But he said there that your mind is built in a way to protect you, to keep you in your comfort zone, to keep you where you are. As soon as you want to change, your brain goes like, what's up with you? Huh? Did you not sleep well last night? What's going on? So you need to realize that. So if you can just get over that, just dive in, just start doing it, and you'll learn as you go along. And that's going to make the biggest difference. And then you just keep going. You just keep going one day at a time. You've heard this so many times. And I can promise you from my live show, from this experience, is exactly one day at a time. And before you know it, it's 45 days later, and here you are uh, you know, with something really, really great to talk about and, and to show. Cool beans. So, um, yes, thank you very much for being with me this morning. I hope that that was a good Sunday morning, a good investment for you. Uh, I don't see anything over on LinkedIn, and I don't see anything else here on uh, YouTube. If you've got any question, you're welcome to, to ask me. I will gladly answer that. And uh, But otherwise, we'll be back tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. sharp and uh, with another topic and uh, some more news about where we're going. Remember, our guests, we've got uh, Johan and Marta on Tuesday. On Wednesday, we will be doing the uh, the data series, the first session. On Thursday, I've got Louis van der Merwe. And then on Friday, we are celebrating our 50th episode. And I will then have the final news about what's happening to the show going forward. But on that note, thank you very much. I really appreciate you. I hope you have a fantastic day. And that, uh, you know, it seems to be a beautiful day here in Joburg. I hope that you will enjoy it with your family. And thank you very much for your time and spending it with me. Enjoy it. I will see you back uh, for the next one tomorrow morning. Have a, have a great one. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Bye-bye.